Hello and welcome back to the seventh episode of a nostalgia playthrough of Close Combat 3 Cross of Iron, the grand campaign with the Russians on Elite Difficulty. Now in the last episode, if you watched that, we managed by the end of it to push the Germans off the entire operation on the first day of the first map, which was this, and uh, now we are attacking. <laughs> oh. As you can see, a full strength for the operation. The, the Germans, we took out pretty much everything they had. Like, for, to my knowledge, all they have left now is a uh, anti-tank rifle type gun. Like, it's not even a fully fledged gun. It's more like an anti-tank rifle with a shield that's, like, on wheels. Uh, so, yeah, they don't necessarily have that much. Maybe we can actually make a push and uh, attack them. But the thing is, we didn't have the entire last operation to build up our forces, so we're just kind of left with a fairly defensive force still. Uh, yeah. Could upgrade the command team, I guess. Oh, well, we took a casualty, and that's, that's pretty much why. Right now it's a submachine gun and a rifle. It's, yeah, it's no priority to get that last guy. This militia team here as well. They're worth nothing. We can refit them for a tree, cheapest. I'll consider it. It's not really huge or uh, like high up on my list of priorities, though. I would love to have some tanks. Um, I think we'll just try to maybe just try to get as much ground as we can, and then go for truce. Kind of play it like this. I don't know, cause it's ah uh, yeah. Well, we don't have a mobile strike force. That's too, too good. We could trade in our anti-tank guns. But I kind of want to have my anti-tank on, so... Okay, if we do some math here, like a T-28... Ah, we need another 23 points for that. How much could we get? Oh, 36, so we could be at 86, then we'd need another 9. Um... Okay, I want the KV-1. If I can get the KV-1, it's got such substantial armor, it could be just like... We, we could win. We could take the map immediately if we have a KV-1. It's just we're going to have to sacrifice a lot to get it, though. Uh, so, okay. We can always revert, I believe. Click revert to cancel all the team selections you made. Uh, so we can't retire something. and Then do that, I guess. I don't know. Well, at least this one militia guy is now. He has seen battle, so he's got two bars of experience. Other server infantry is starting to get somewhat experienced as well. Ah, uh, but yeah, yeah, hmm. Okay. Okay, I can always reload if I mess up on the selection, I suppose. So, so that's an ongoing save file between the games. But yeah, we're gonna remove the Cossack anti-tank gun. Oh, I don't like this. And we're gonna remove that, and we have 86. We could get a T-28E. But they're not as well armored. I, I think we're going to shell out the extra points to get a, uh, a KV. So now we need another 9 points. I think maybe we surrender our Cossack heavy machine gun team. Now we have a KV-139 edition. The first Soviet heavy tank. The KV-1 is slow but very heavily armored. Undergunned by mid-war standards. Its combination of heavy armor, 76.2mm main gun and three machine guns made it a terrifying opponent in the early war. And we're in the early war, so it's a terrifying opponent. We do have this 76.2mm cannon, now on a mobile platform, which is good. Um, yeah, and it has three, three different machine guns. And it can smoke a little bit. I smoke grenades though, that's not like tank mounted smoke canisters. Yeah, we can't refit really anything else, uh, but the uh, reserve infantry now is uh, still, the morale is kind of trash, but they could potentially operate to some degree on their own, and the militia, the one guy left in the militia, will just uh, have, we'll, we'll pretend he's like a, a part of the group leader team, because uh, they're short on the guy, and he will fill that role, I suppose. It pretty much needs to be close to the commander anyway due to morale reasons, but I think, uh, yeah. 
Let's do this. If that KV-1 gets taken out, though, holy fucking skadoodles are we in a bad position if that happens. That is not gonna be good for us. Okay, we got a three-story building here. We can put a heavy machine gun team up in that. And, uh... Yeah, let's just kind of see. They cover quite a substantial amount of area from here. Very good. Then, group leader. I don't know. We'll put the group leader here, I think. Together with the militia guy. We'll just stay here initially. Then we can maybe make a flanking maneuver with them. We can maybe throw on some reserve infantry on that flanking maneuver. We'll just have to see. We'll put some... Uh, I'll put them in this building, I think. I don't want to have them too far forward just yet. I want the tank to be doing most of the work here. And we don't really know what we're going to run into uh, in regards to enemies. Now, this tank crew, it's not all that. It's basically on level with our uh, reserve infantry, so experience and morale. Hopefully that will change, though. So we have one tank, and we need to really use it for what it's worth. But at the same time, we need to keep it alive. So we begin. Straight off the bat, we're seeing an anti-tank thing over there. That's the uh, anti-tank gun. Okay, heavy machine gun team might be able to, uh, to do some damage there. Maybe we can move into KV-1 to get some shots on it as well. So let's get it going with the KV-1 though. Look at how slowly it operates its gun. And it reverses, so it might not be able to shoot. It's a 5 centimeter AT gun. It's not the worst. The KV should be able to withstand that frontally. What's the ammo actually? We started with 750 rounds. Okay, let's just hold ammo or hold fire for now. We'll keep firing, I guess. It's good to suppress them because our uh, tank here is taking his sweet time, but he did take out the anti tank gun. Fantastic. I think we're going to move in further with the tank. Kind of clear the area around the, around the strong point here. We'll move the group leader and the militia guy into this uh, house here. So they can shoot down on anything that might be in the trenches and kind of. Give us a little bit better visual than the uh, KV-1 might be able to do. So as I, as I already mentioned, uh, we did take out a lot of the enemy forces in the, in the previous mission. So there's a good chance since they're now defending from our attack that they don't really have that much resources to be spending. Okay, we got the, there's that anti-tank rifle cannon type thing. It counts as a gun, but it isn't really a gun. Come on, KV-1. No, what? What? Okay, so why the hell did the, uh, did its uh, fire come in from off the map there for a second? Okay, what we taking out? It's a, see, it's a heavy anti-tank rifle. It is not a gun. As you can see on the lower hand side here, it says heavy anti-tank rifle. Which we should be able to stomp the frick out. Yeah, we're taking them on pretty good. If that thing is gone, then maybe they're anti-tank. Okay, the, the commander survived. Uh, su uh, surrendered, I mean. Which also means he survived, I suppose. We'll move the reserve infantry into this building here. And I think we'll just move this reserve infantry here as well over in this direction. And we'll keep having a heavy machine gun team covering towards this area should any enemy infantry try to do something. They're resorting to reserve infantry, so that could be quite good for us. In fact, I mean, our KV-1 is slow, but it is a lumbering beast. Emphasis on beast. We're not really seeing any infantry in the strong point here. Whoa. Oh, he got wrecked. Hey, we got an MG team moving in, huh? That is uh, not what we would like to see. Gonna not be too cocky with our infantry then, actually. In fact... Uh, well, if I can maybe get suppressive fire going there so they don't return fire. Or shoot at us too much. A heavy machine gun team can also target them. We've gotten one of them down. Okay, yeah, we got them good. Uh, tank can focus on the reserve infantry. Ah, fantastic. We chased them off the map. 
Yeah, I think it was really a good idea to take that uh, KV-1 and just kind of relinquish our anti-tank guns. Uh, this went almost better than expected. Oh, I guess I expected it could go this well. So we destroyed a gun, we captured a gun, we killed four guys, wounded three and took two prisoners. And then the enemy decided it was time to get out of there. So I think we got them wheeling for the rest of this operation, which is good. Um, that KV-1, it's going to carry us pretty hard through quite a few episodes there, I hope. That's my uh, hope. But the reality of it could be different. Time will tell. So, I mean, you can catch me in the next episode if you want to see how this goes. Uh, but so far, I'm pretty happy with our results. And uh, yeah, if you've liked the episode so far here, I would appreciate if you would consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing to my channel. It would certainly help me out. And uh, yeah, with that, well, moving on to the next one. Have a good one.